Okay, so in the last video I did, I uh, showed using uh, this project here, DJI Drone ID, uh, specifically the GNU radio portion of it. Uh, I captured a, uh, well, a few bursts. I captured an IQ file of the DJI Drone ID bursts uh, from a Mavic Air 2. And uh, what I wanted to show is the remaining uh, parts of this uh, project, these tools that can then uh, pull the hex, uh, essentially decode that drone ID and pull the hex out, which uh, that hex can then be converted into um, information, which I will show uh, on another page here as a part of the project. You'll see uh, this is actually a tool that creates frames, but you'll see the information and how it's unpacked and how the um, how the format is, is is broken down on the hex there as far as you can see the serial lat long uh, location of the uh, the phone app itself the home location where the drone took off so on and so forth so that's the information that's that's in there uh, just for reference here the Mavic Air 2 you can see uh, has the OcuSync uh, 2.0 so when I recorded I put the uh, controlling basically everything I could in the app on 5.8 uh, to ensure or at least it seemed to keep the burst that I was looking for in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and I grabbed that burst with a B205 mini and uh, so you can look at the previous video on that uh, what I'm going to show is uh, a brief let's see we're, we are going to so normally Oh, I guess I should point out too, this is a live, latest Dragon OS running live from a USB stick. Not even installed, uh, so I'm not going to have the NVIDIA drivers to show the, um, oh gosh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, the, uh, oh, the, G, the phosphor, the GR phosphor, which is really what you need to see that burst. We're just going to use a QT GUI and a GNU radio here, but normally you'd go into the user source, DJI uh, GNU radio, and there is a flow graph there. I've already did some edits to that flow graph, so I'm going to open the one on my desktop with GNU Radio Companion and Drone ID Testing.GRC. Okay, so you recall when I had this open before I was using the phosphor sync what I did was I just grabbed a QT uh, frequency sync threw it out on here and then disabled the uh, USRP source and enabled the multiply signal source throttle and file source the I'll change this to we don't need it repeating I changed this file to the IQ file that I had recorded so I'll just do a brief uh, demonstration of that again and explain what should be happening now my understanding this procedure is going to change I was actually messing with it today and it looks like the new radio itself will be able to decode and show the information in the bottom left hand corner here but this particular flow graph is set up to uh, which we need to make a directory in the temp called bursts uh, which I've already done uh, so with this particular version I'm running right now, you need to make that temp burst directory. Even when I was recording live, I needed to do that because as the bursts are detected, they're written to that directory. So let me see. So I'm just going to show playing back the IQ file and we'll see that the bursts are being detected just like I showed in the last video and they're saving to the uh, temp directory. Now this is going to look different because it doesn't have the phosphor sync, but if you pay close attention, you'll see it raise. You'll see the bursts coming in and the uh, information uh, being extracted here. And so we will stop this. We should be able to look in the temp burst directory and we'll see there's some files there. Those uh, should be, I, I'm pretty sure, like essentially just short clips IQ clips FC 32 I would imagine files now what should happen is you should be able to run the uh, user source DJI drone ID MATLAB updated scripts you should be able to uh, start, start up Octave uh, or MATLAB and process these short little clips and be able to get the hex information uh, for whatever reason that hasn't happened for me yet but 
what we can do or what I have have seen worked work is uh, let me think so so we don't need this flow graph anymore we're going to don't need really need that anymore we don't need that and we'll save this uh, image uh, for last so if we go into our updated scripts and we open up Oh, one thing actually first, and because this is in the user source directory, uh, I I just did sudo make directory images. Um, you know, enter made that. I think I might have did uh, sudo chmod. Uh, probably just threw seven 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 on there just for now. Images because when I run this script, uh, not as root, it will want to. In this particular implementation, wants to uh, throw images there that are generated. I think unfortunately I closed out those uh, images that uh, popped up and are visible. Maybe they're in here. Oh yeah, okay, they are from where I ran this. So at this point we just run Octave, Octave, however you say that. Uh, let's see, and if we do process file, which is I'm in this updated scripts directory, we see the process file. You don't have to do the .m. Now because I uh, let me think because I forget um, let's see yep okay so when you go to run it uh, I had to put the uh, uh, package in here uh, signal and so you need to load that just like I'm doing here now we should be able to process file. Now this file is like two gigs so I'm obviously not going to sit here the whole way through until it finishes. Uh, I'll just start it up. You'll see it uh, starts processing that file and you can read those uh, scripts. You can open them up with uh, your editor or whatever you want to do. You can read what's kind of going on which now that I think about it I should I should have shown that part that's a uh, it's an important part so if we uh, change into MATLAB updated scripts because you're probably wondering how did it know what file to process good question sudo nano process file all I did which you can read kinda like what the steps are and how this uh, current implementation is running all I had to do was come down here I changed the file path to where my file is which is actually on an external drive I left the file sample rate uh, 30.72 didn't change that and I did change the file offset to zero because I recorded it with zero which now brings up another good point if we take a step back a second uh, the other change that I made when playing this file back was I opened up the offset and set it to zero. Okay, so that's just the way I had it it set up. All right, so you process in the file. Once the file, if you actually save bursts and, and everything was good, what will uh, end up happening? Which uh, my quick editing here, you're going to get the frames. Uh, are spit out and those frames when properly uh, decoded will uh, essentially generate the information that is here so there you go that's uh, short of actually decoding those frames and showing my lat long all that kind of stuff which I'm obviously not going to do um, that uh, should get you to where you can capture the burst and decode it and everything you need is uh, essentially already built into Dragon OS so um, I couldn't make it much easier than that it's it's obviously not my uh, project this drone uh, uh, DJI drone ID that's uh, extremely impressive you can see the, the uh, probably the gentleman's name here that's working on it uh, and a lot of it uh, is some really complex stuff so uh, glad that these type of projects are out there uh, just hope that it makes it easier trying to 
build it all into Dragon OS. All right, thank you.